Hi, this is John Westfall, and we're going to walk through a bit of complex uh, cutting and pasting and, and moving some things together in order for you to see how you can write custom reports in our uh, open source survey system. So full disclosure, this is going to get a little bit technical. There's going to be some coding involved in terms of uh, SQL statements, SQL, Structured Query Language. If you've never used SQL, it looks intimidating, but it's really just a way of asking a computer to give you information in the format you want it. And part of the beauty of this system is that you can ask the computer to give you the information in any way that you would like, so it opens up a lot of doors for you, but it also is a problem because uh, you have to know how to ask the computer what you're at looking for. So this is an example scenario where we had a participant that participated in a study in ORC3. His name was Bill Smith. If I go over to my experiments, I go to the test experiment, I can see that I had a participation today, a session today, and if I look at that, I see that Bill Smith, yep, he showed up, he participated, he's green, he was there. Now let's imagine that we then sent uh, Bill Smith a survey over in Lime Survey. So I go into my survey participants. I sent him a survey and I asked him to take it. Maybe it's a follow-up survey for the uh, lab study that he was in. We can see that Bill Smith was uh, sent that particular invitation today, uh, but he hasn't completed it yet. Uh, maybe he'll never complete it. I don't know. I could nudge him and see if he'll do it. He doesn't exist in real life, so nudging a fake person probably won't help. Now imagine it is six months later and you wanna do some reporting. You wanna see how many people participated, did they take the survey, all of those sorts of things. Well, you know, as a system administrator, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say, well, I've got some of this information in a few places. I've got my participants in ORSI, so I know in that database who I can uh, grab. I've got some tables that tell me when people participated. So this particular table here tells me that participant ID uh, 84835433, who is Bill Smith, he participated um, in a certain session. Tells me his status ID was one. I actually have to go to another table to see that status ID one lines up with participating. ORC lets you have multiple different kinds of statuses where you know you can say someone participated but you don't want them to participate again or they no showed but they could participate again. It can get complex. You can make it as complex as you'd like. But imagine that I've got a user uh, that's not very technically minded. Uh, they're not gonna like if I tell them, oh, all you gotta do is go into the database and uh, run a SQL statement, and that SQL statement looks like this, which is a little ugly. And if you hit go, it then shows you, oh, participant ID 8483540033, who is Bill Smith. Yeah, he, uh, he participated in the lab experiment because we know the participated column is there. Oh, he didn't actually do the survey though. He was invited to the survey, but he didn't complete it. So now for Bill Smith, uh, as the administrator, I know what happened to him, but my users are not going to be too thrilled with that. So that's where the second part takes over. Now that I've crafted my SQL statement to get all of these pieces of data, and I'll provide some example SQL statements in the, the code for the, the paper that we're writing. But maybe I wanna try to create something that's a little bit more user-friendly. And that's where this piece of software called Reportico comes in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just because I'm already, I've already made this SQL statement and I've already got it uh, doing what I want it to do, I'm gonna create a view from it. A view is basically a shortcut. Uh, and I'm gonna call this view um, participated in study. I could call it whatever I want. Um, and actually, that's not the definer. That's actually got to become the view name. And I'm going to hit go. And now um, I see that in my ORSI table, I have a view, and that view is participated in study. And when I click on it, it gives me all of that information. 
At this point, if my users are savvy enough to know how to use PHP MyAdmin, I could just say, hey, I created a new view for you. It's called Participated in Study. Go there, click on it. It'll tell you what you need to know. My users might not even be that uh, savvy. So I'm going to play with this software called Reportico. Reportico allows me to create a prettier version of a view or a table. So I'm going to create a new project here. And it's going to ask me for some information. So I'm going to tell it, well, the project name is Participants Tracking. Project title for Reportico is um, basically the same sort of deal. You don't have to get too fancy with it. Database name. Or C D B, I believe is the database name for that. Yeah, or C D B name. Or C D B user. Uh, here's also one of those moments where you go, huh, what was the database password? Well, that's why we have configuration files. Let's see, the configuration file for Orsi's database is under config. Let's see here, what was that password? Oh, it was the ever popular just Orsi. And then I could set a project password if I don't want people using this project that I haven't authorized, but I don't really care. Okay, yep, anyone will be able to run reports, that's fine. So now I've got my new project, Participant Tracking, and I'm going to create a report tracking, and I'm going to take my SQL. Now, if you remember, we created that view. One of the things that uh, Reportico doesn't like is if you don't actually specify all the columns that you want. So you can't use a wildcard uh, it even tells you this. Wild card notation won't work. So I'm going to paste in. I've got everything I need there. If I hit apply, it's going to say, hey, you've got a bunch of unnamed expressions, but that's okay. We'll just call them columns 1 through 10. So that works. Now let's make this a little prettier. I'm going to set the report title to participations in study. I'm going to go through my columns. I'm going to give them names that uh, or column titles that make sense. So participant ID. And then I'm going to go, I think the next one is we go email, first name, last name. should have been the second one. And we could go through and do this for all of them. I'm just going to do them for the ones there. You can change your page setup, things like that, however you'd like the report to actually look, page headers, footers, display orders, all of that. Reportico has a ton of features. Um, I'm going to save this as participations and study, hit save. And once I've got everything designed, I can actually use these buttons to see the report. So if I do this, it'll generate a new HTML report. I can see participations and study and the columns that I've put in with the names that I put all the way out, and I could just finish those off. Reportico also allows you to generate. PDF files. Uh, so if I do that and I do participations and study, I can actually get a nice PDF report. Uh, so if you've got users that want PDFs or CSV files. So if you've got a user that would like to have all this data in a spreadsheet, you can get it from the spreadsheet as well. And the nice thing about Reportico is that I've created the report. If I log out of um, my administration page, I can just tell users, hey, go to Reportico, 
go to the project tracking or participant tracking project and choose participations in study. Once they're there, they can then generate the HTML. They can get the report or they can get the HTML file, the PDF, whatever they'd like. So even the, the worst uh, non-techie user can usually follow, go to this page, click go, click participations and study, and click go, and there's my report. A little bit nicer, especially if I were to actually go in and follow in those column headings, than telling them, hey, go into PHP MySQL, and what was that giant long, uh, you know, code that we had there to, oh yeah, there, would, there it was, um, and run that. That's not as friendly. So hopefully this video has given you some ideas about how you can glue some of this data together. Uh, and it also allows you to, if you're using other systems other than ORSI and Lime Survey, to think about how you can glue those things together. Uh, it's all SQL, and SQL can be a pretty daunting thing if you've never used it before. Um, I can just kind of briefly tell you if you look at the um, SQL statement here. Let me go back, put it back in for a moment. Click go. Um, you can actually get explain SQL in PHP My Admin, and it will tell you what this is doing. And it is basically saying here that you are getting data out of these tables, and you are connecting them in different ways. Um, when we connect tables in SQL, we use this join statement. And so, in this case, we grab data from the Lime Survey links from the participate at, the participants, and the participation statuses. And we could have joined in as many tables as we wanted to. So if you've got data hiding in some of these other tables or even in other databases, you can pull them in uh, to create the report that you want. In the next video, uh, we will be kind of wrapping some things up with some ideas and best practices. Uh, hope to see you then.